what are you going to do? What are you going to do when you get a medical setback? Uh, still no manager. So this is all me. So don't forget, lower right-hand corner. Uh, please subscribe, like, and share. Help me uh, with that, and I will work on getting well. I uh, had a medical setback. I'm currently in a medical setback. It won't be over soon um, on antibiotics. And um, hopefully, hopefully, I will not have to do the IVs like I did last time. That's... That was thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars. So for those of you that were um, that do pay taxes in this country to help us veterans, I appreciate that. You have no idea they were gonna. I come in with a little hole on my bottom of my foot and some pain. This is this is back in 2018, 2018 I guess or 19, 2018, December's so almost 2019. I go in. And thinking, yeah, you know, it's not healing that well. But, you know, as a diabetic, you know that sometimes foot injuries don't heal that well. So I had it for a few weeks. And then I thought, that's weird. I'm going to go get that looked at. So I go down to the emergency room in, in Long Beach. And they say, well, you know, here's your bone. <laughs> it's all the way to the bone. So it's, it happens pretty quickly. And they say, what we'll do is we'll get you set up for surgery. We'll <coughs> go ahead and cut that. And I go, what? We'll, we'll cut off your toe maybe part of the foot so this one for example this is my foot they kind of cut like that maybe and and until it makes sense like i said in every single video i'm not saying that the va was wrong or medical was wrong in america or the world it totally makes sense to me uh if you if this is my toe and i had an infection here in the top of the toe they would cut where there was no infections where it's clean it makes sense it's a if you have a big block of cheese and it has one little piece of mold on you might say i'll oh, cut that piece of mold off and the rest of the cheese is good. So it totally makes sense to me. But I was shocked. You know, nine days in the hospital, six weeks at home of IVs, four IVs. I, give, I had to give myself four IVs a day. I had a pick line, which went from, from like here all the way up to my heart. You can, they have a screen. You can watch this, this like metal snake going to your heart. Very scary. Um, couldn't get it wet at all. You know, I had to shoot uh, heparin into the, into the pig line and then first I shoot at, I shoot at saline and then I'd have to do the IV then when the IV is done I'd have to shoot another saline um, uh, tube in there in fact, I have one here this is what they look like now I just use it to clean any kind of a wound because I have a lot of extras left over I don't want to throw them away but you have to shoot that and then you have to shoot another one similar to that a little shorter then that was heparin it would go in there and I guess that helps with the heart so you know, I vowed I'd never let that happen to me again. I'll never let that happen again. And here it's happened again. Uh, the difference between having a problem with your foot and not having a problem with your foot is that there's a wound on your foot. So you don't know, is it going to be nothing? Is it going to be minor? Or is it going to be major? And for me, last time it was major. This time it looks like maybe it's a little less um, uh, tragic or, or, or a little lower on the scale of things that are bad because I have an appointment next Wednesday. So next time I'm coming to see the doctor. So a week from yesterday, um, last time is go to the emergency room, which I did on my own, but they said, if it ever happens again, go right to the emergency room. And so this time they're kind of thinking, well, let's try these antibiotics that I'm on right now. See how my body reacts to that. Part of the reason I had to go to the hospital for so long last time is they would take a scraping of the, of the wound, uh, and to get the, uh, infection to find out which, kind of uh, antibiotics worked the best now after six weeks of antibiotics it was four a day for six weeks they had no idea if it was going to work or not i may do all of that and still have to go and get my leg cut off or my foot at that point so i take four ivs a day in the morning time i take two together and then um six hours later i take another one and then six hours later after that i take another one um approximate you know because it's only so many hours in a day that's 18 hours worth of time basically um and what i do i give in the morning like at five and i would take it and I, I hook the iv onto my pick line and then i put the they're like balls they call them cassettes but they're really like balls they must have used to come in something that look like a cassette i guess but they're round circle balls and they look like you know you can bounce them down the down the street and i just I'd hook it up set it next to me and sleep and i knew how long it took for that to drain because I took a big one in the morning and a small one in the morning and then two big ones, uh, and then, a, then a big one in the afternoon and then a big one at night. So it's a total of four, three big, one small. I don't know the difference between the two. So I would sit there and um, sleep <laughs> for like, a, I think the big one took 40 minutes to, to do. So I set a clock for 30, 
five, whatever. And then I get up, and if it was flat, then okay, I could change it. Then I would cap it off, change it, uh, do the squirting thing again, then change it, put the small one on. It took about 25 minutes, so then I get another 20 minute nap. And then I, if I would go back to sleep, uh, the, the good thing and the bad thing was it was hiatus, so that means there was no really work going on. It was an early hiatus, so there was no acting work. So I was able to go to the gig economy. At first, I didn't work at all because I didn't want to walk on the toe. It had nothing really to do with the administration of the IVs. So I would just, uh, I didn't work, I think, for the first two weeks of that. And then the last four weeks of it, I did work. So I would get up at 5 in the morning. I would hook the thing up, do all that. I would go to work at 8 in the morning, and I'd work from, like, 8 until uh, 2, whatever uh, it was going to be, whatever the time frame was, to come home to the next one. And then I found I could even do one while I'm out working if I had to because I had a pick line that went from here all the way to my heart in the opening. And it was, a, it was like a metal piece of metal that hung out of my arm. I could hook that ball up and it was long enough I could put it in a pocket and don't even know I had it. As long as I wore a long sleeve and I didn't move my arm too much. It was, it was a big long thing that was taped to my arm. No one would even know I was doing it. Um, but you need to be careful with the cleanliness and the making sure it's administering properly if there's a problem in your... So what I thought, well, I can still do the gig economy, and I did. So I worked for Grub of Only, um, and I would just go work for whatever many hours I could do. So if I could make go out on the first shift and make like $30, $40, then do it again in the evening time and maybe make another 50 So I was at least making like, you know, 90 up to like 100 100 whatever. Um a day, at least it's not even making some money. Um, I guess I could have gone on to disability for those six weeks. I didn't even think about that till after it happened. <laughs> so I could have probably been on disability. Um, so that's what happened then. And now it's happening again to a lower level, I think. So let's talk about you and me. You and me. What do we do when we have a medical setback? I think the way we have is we just have this choice of either I, I do nothing and just let it happen, you know, or I, um, or I, I do something. I, you know, I go back to basically I have to go back to what I was doing before. <laughs> we either stop and let whatever happen, or we keep moving forward. We keep going. We keep charging ahead. When I first got out of the, out of the hospital. They said it's okay to it's okay to walk. Just try not to walk on the toe itself. So kind of like tilt my foot like this and walk. And they gave me crutches and all that stuff. Well, you really can't do much work like that. And in my if I if I was a maybe a computer programmer, and I could work at home and type. COVID happened right after that, so I probably could have done some kind of a job at home. Um, uh, we all were working out of, out of home uh, at that time. I was an essential personnel, so I was able to be out when everybody else was quarantined. It was okay for me to be out there, mask and gloves. But, uh, yeah, you got to make that decision. What are you going to do? What are you going to do? Are you going to give up? Not me. But you? Probably not you either. So what you have to do is, just, okay, here's a setback. It's just like when you eat too much food. If you go to a party, so I'm just going to have sparkling a sparkling water drink and maybe eat a couple of carrot sticks and some celery off of the relish plate, and then they bring out this big delicious whatever and you eat some of that and then you man, smell those cookies fresh baked cookies and you eat a couple of cookies and then on and then your blood sugar the next morning on tuesday is very very high there's nothing you can do you can't go back on tuesday you can't go back to monday and not do that eating it, it already happened and so that's what's going on with this now um the original the fact that there is a medical setback it's already been determined that it's happening. So now I have to figure out what I'm going to do. Hopefully it's not as severe as last time, but I have to do whatever I can. So sometimes you have to modify your fitness program. Like if I was walking a lot on the trail right now, I wouldn't really be able to do that. I do still walk. Last Yesterday, even though I was found out about this yesterday, I still got 10,000 steps. Usually I try to work, get 12,000 to 15,000 steps minimum per day. But I was still able to get 10,000. Most people, that's their goal, 10,000 steps a day. Uh, for me, it's more like 15,000 because of 12, between 12 and 15,000 every day, if I'm not on a, some kind of a challenge or whatever, uh, if I can get 17,000 or more, that's great. But if I get like 12 to 15,000, I know it, that that will take away some of the unintentional steps that you take throughout the day. Like right now, when I finish filming this, I'll probably get up and go to the bathroom. Uh, I'm drinking coffee. So I don't have to get my coffee. 
But if I was to have to drink coffee, there's going to be steps involved walking to and from the coffee pot. I could take off my Fitbit and not include those. So what I want to do is when I did my walking challenges, only including the walking that I was doing on the challenge itself for that. But on a regular daily basis, I don't want to like, okay, now I'm walking. And okay, I got, it says here I got 1,500 steps and I'm going to go walk. You know, oh, now I got, you know, 7,000 steps. So I walked whatever, 5,500 or whatever it is. Um, I don't want to have to do that. It's too confusing. So if I just know if I get 12,000 to 15,000, I'll, I'll, I'll probably uh, account for those unintentional, uh, not necessarily unintentional, but steps I wasn't really out there moving. So when that, right now, medical setback. You know, so I got to do what the doctor says. Um, not going to let them cut my toe off uh, unless it's... Like I said before, if it's th th this, what I had before is toe threatening, foot threatening. It wasn't life threatening. Now, if this infection was able to move to like my, they would say, hey, this is moving to your heart or your lungs or something, then I'd have to go ahead and, and have some form of a surgery. But I don't think that's going to happen. I have experience now with this. Am I worried about it? Yes. Am I disappointed? Yes. Do I feel guilty? Uh, like maybe responsible for it? Uh, do I feel defeated a little bit because my blood sugar was higher? So if my blood sugar was doing as good as it was ever you know like in the you know every morning 95 100 you know 88 even those morning readings those are all good and now they went up now today it was uh, my blood sugar was 104 104 i usually don't tell my numbers but it was, it was 104 today which is okay they said for a um, non-diabetic 100 or less is good so i'm a diabetic so they said for me if it's 130 or less you're doing good so um yes it was 88 i think so uh, it's going to bounce a little bit right now because I'm, I'm trying to, you know, get going on with this medications, maybe walking a little bit less, but eating a little bit better. So that happens. So if you have a medical setback, if you have a medical setback, what are you going to do? Are you going to give up on everything? Now, there may be a time where they can say, yeah, you can't exercise when your heart's not strong enough or you can't exercise. That was me when I first started, um, but I put it all that weight. Uh, they didn't want me to work out or walk or do anything. So that could happen. So you got to talk to your doctor, talk to your physical therapist if you have one talk to the pharmacist whoever you have in, in, in your medical corner corner <laughs> uh, uh, that would be who you need to talk to and come up with a plan and remember it's your plan because what they're going to tell you all the time is just you know eat less and exercise more that's what they're talking about people always tell me this well david all you need to do is to exercise and eat more fruit and vegetables well that's great if i wasn't diabetic so eating fruit no, no, I think it was the blood sugar. So that's why I said in earlier videos, something that's good for others might not be good for me as a diabetic, maybe not be good for you as a diabetic if you're a diabetic. But some diets are great for one thing. You know, those uh, those uh, all meat diets, those keto diets are great, but what if my cholesterol goes up? What if my my blood pressure goes up from eating too, many, too much meat? Um, what if this happens? What if this happens? Because someone will tell you, will, will tell you, you'll hear that if you go to the gym. Oh yeah, what you need to do is this. Is what I did. I did. I would drink lemon water, and I would. I would just you know like I eat an like an apple in the morning. I cut up an apple and I take carrots and I bring some carrots with me to work and I just eat apples and carrots all day while I'm snacking. And I well, apples and carrots are full of sugar. You know, uh, it's natural sugar. It's better than just eating. You, know, you get the sugar bowl and, and you start scooping sugar in your mouth. Yeah, of course, it's better than that. But for my body, my body doesn't know the difference between that, uh, a, you know, a, a spoonful of sugar or a piece of really good uh, whole wheat, whole grain bread. It doesn't know the difference when it comes to the carbs. It knows the difference between other things. But my body says, oh, carbs is sugar. Sugar is carbs. And that's what happens. So medical setback, I'll keep you guys all posted. This is the medication I'm taking. I take this four times a day. And I made another video that showed it. But this is what I'm on right now. Wednesday, I will be on something else maybe. I'm going to go to the podiatry. Uh, they'll look at the toe and then make the determinations of what should be done. Uh, and we'll go from there. So I hope you're having a great day. I hope you're not having a medical issue. I hope you're not having one. I unfortunately am having a medical setback right there down below. I'm pointing to the left, so it should be pointing to the right. There should be a, a subscribe section. Hey, do me a get well 
thing. If you haven't already subscribed, please subscribe, like, and share. Tell me about your journey. Write down there in the bottom of the comment section. How are you doing? Are, are you having any medical setbacks? What do you do when you do have a medical setback? Let me know. Let's uh, have, that, have, a, have a dialogue and, and go back and forth. Maybe I'll make a video about some of the things you said. Maybe, you know, so I'll say, hey, I'll say, you know, there's a lady here in, in Arkansas or this lady here, a man here in, you know, Vancouver, Canada, and, and they and he said that he did this when he got sick. But you got to keep this going too. So it's going to be depressing. It's going to be probably uh, the, you know disappointing. Um, uh, you're going to feel maybe a little bit defeated. So it's from the top of her head to the bottom of her feet. In this case, I have some on the bottom of my foot. So I got to make sure that the the, 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 the old noggin, the old the old uh, coconut, uh, I can make sure that I keep myself going with that. Hey, it's okay. It's okay. You know things will be different for a while and hopefully back to normal we'll have to see take care everyone have a great day i'll probably publish this at one o'clock today okay take care if it if it uploads in time some, sometimes they'll shoot a video it'll be 12 minutes long 15 minutes long in this example it'll be almost six probably 16 minutes long and you click upload and it uploads in 30 minutes other times you click it and it uploads in nine hours and i've written them before and i said what's going on with that and they just said it happens like that sometimes so it could be 30 minutes it's gonna be nine hours so hopefully it's 30 minutes take care everyone have a great day uh weekend's almost upon us